EGADS, the dreaded bathroom scale. This week on Bringing Fitness to You, we're going to learn about weight management, which is about how you can manage your weight and not let your weight manage you. So you ready to learn some new stuff? Let's go. It's estimated that 130 million Americans are either overweight or obese. But it's not just a problem that clothes don't fit. It affects all aspects of your life, like your moods, self-image, job performance, and even personal relationships. Organizations like the Center for Disease Control cite poor diet and inactivity as a leading cause of obesity. In turn, being overweight or obese leads directly to other health-related problems, such as heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, and on and on. And it's not just ourselves. We pass our poor lifestyle habits on to our children as well. Obesity rates have tripled in adolescents over the last 20 years. Could we be raising the next generation of children who don't outlive their parents? In this edition of Bringing Fitness to You, we'll address topics regarding eating habits, exercise, and the importance of managing our weight. I'm here again with Sally Ehrenstam. I wanted to ask her the question a lot of people ask her, and that is, why don't diets work, but why do we keep insisting on doing them over and over? We keep on doing them because they are short-term, quick fixes for people who want to lose weight and feel good about themselves. So what you're talking about are like these, you know, lose 10 pounds in a couple of days right. by drinking this juice or taking this pill or... Right, right. Now, where does that weight come from when people lose that weight? Well what you said is true, they do lose the weight and that's why it works quickly and people you know all of a sudden feel great about themselves and they're successful and it works but what's happening is you're losing a lot of water weight that's what people don't realize because your body's made up of 60 percent water so that can be a significant amount of weight that you do lose but the problem is is you don't stay on these diets forever and your body eventually does has to has to get rehydrated and you just gain the weight back and I also understand that these diets also do really great things to your metabolism as well Exactly. What happens is these yo-yo dieting, this dieting and being really good and then cheating and I'm off my diet and then on Monday I start my diet again. What happens is every time you go on a diet and you restrict the calories um, like that, your metabolism slows down. And so it just makes it that much harder for you to lose weight on that next diet. Okay, Sally, so give me an example of how these diets don't work. Mm -hmm. Well, what I've seen is I've seen people go on these diets and I've seen them say no to these foods that they love and that's the big problem because when they go off the diet and they see a piece of cake, they, want the, they eat. The, I've seen people eat the whole cake because they think they're not going to have the cake tomorrow. They're not going to be able to get the cake next week and that's how diets don't work is then you start overeating. This depriving causes overeating and that's the yo-yo cycle. So what you're describing to me is basically like the same thing that happens right before an affair, like a party, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, that people will starve themselves and then binge for the affair. Right. Because if you think about it, what they've been doing for the last two weeks or three weeks or whatever is they've been restricting so much. They've lost some weight, they've lost some water weight, but also their metabolism has decreased. And now they go to this affair and they overeat and your metabolism is slower than it used to be, you gain the weight back in one night. And that's how it doesn't work. So on a long-term basis, you're talking about a non-dieting approach to eating. Right. It's called the non-diet approach. And basically what that means is it's a lifestyle approach. So it's not a short-term diet. It's um, not only thinking about eating healthy, but living healthy. Um, that includes exercise, as you know. Yeah. And um, it also includes balanced meals and trying and that's where you would probably go to a nutritionist to learn what balanced meals are and include lots of fruits and vegetables and think about what you're eating but to also include those foods that you love no food is a bad food um, the cake that you want every once in a while you can have but you include those kinds of foods in limited amounts 
you know, I know this is the hard way. This is the long-term way, and it's not a quick fix. What I would suggest people do is to see a trainer and to see a nutritionist and just learn about healthy eating and balanced eating. So what you're saying is slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. As a personal trainer, I've come across hundreds of myths related to diet and weight management. And often it's these misconceptions that keep us from being and feeling our best. Here are some of the more popular misconceptions you'll hear. Myth number one, carbohydrates make you fat. Carbohydrates don't make you fat. Too many calories and too little exercise is what makes you fat. The fact is the body gets its energy or calories from three sources carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Carbohydrates are a valuable source of quick energy for those people who are active. Now, most snack foods like candy and chips are also considered carbohydrates, but so are fruits and vegetables. The culprit is it's easier to overeat carbohydrate-rich snack foods like potato chips than it is to overeat corn and pineapple. My advice, don't count carbs. Watch how much food you're eating. Myth number two, if you exercise enough, you can eat anything you want. Oh, that is so false. For example, if you were to run a marathon, you would burn 2,600 calories, but a pound of body fat is 3,500 calories. So you could spend two to four hours running a marathon and not burn off even one pound of body fat. The secret to weight loss, and it's no great secret, is to exercise more and eat less. Myth number three, spot reduce through exercise. I'm sure you've seen those late night offers with stomach machines that promise you washboard abs in three weeks. But you can do stomach crunches from now to doomsday and you probably won't get the body you want. There's a difference between exercising a muscle and losing the body fat that's on top. If you exercise your stomach muscles, you may get the six pack abs you want but nobody's gonna see them under an extra 20 pounds of body fat. If you wanna see the muscle underneath, you have to lose the body fat that's on top. Myth number four, dieting will make you thin. I've met lots of people who I consider to be experienced dieters. You may even know some too. They've tried every diet method known and yet they still struggle with their weight. The biggest pitfall to dieting is that it's all deprivation and what you can have. If you want to make long-term positive changes in what you're eating, you need to focus on the healthy foods you enjoy and include them in an overall meal plan. And finally, myth number five, losing weight will make you happy. The Hollywood tabloids are filled with thin, rich, beautiful, miserable people. Body weight is only one aspect of a person's self-image. If you win the lottery tomorrow, it doesn't mean very much if you don't feel good about yourself. Conversely, if you feel good about yourself, you have a better chance of achieving your personal and physical goals. In the end, there are plenty of myths, but no miracles. Believe me, if there were, I'd be selling that, not personal training. The answers are available. We just need the commitment to succeed. Well, check you out. Bringing fitness to you, we'll be right back. Attention business owners, imagine your message here. Now you can advertise on Bringing Fitness to You at extremely competitive rates. Bringing Fitness to You is locally produced and reaches over 350,000 cable subscribers in Eastern Montgomery County, Philadelphia, and Cherry Hill. If you're interested in advertising on this program, call 215-885-2828. Capture all the excitement, the memories, and the tradition. On-Air Video will produce a professional high-quality digital video of your child's bar or bat mitzvah. For a free video sample or to reserve your special date, contact On-Air Video at 215 885-2828. That's 
Few things will impact your life like buying or selling your home, which is why you need a professional like Eileen McCafferty Colpe to do it right. As a lifelong resident of Eastern Montgomery County, Eileen is your neighbor in the business, knowledgeable and respected in the community. She will advise you on the best time to buy or sell and will always negotiate to your best advantage. If you're ready to take that next step, contact Eileen directly at 215-620-3302. It's important to snack throughout the day to help keep your blood sugar level on a nice even keel. Now a snack can be anything from a piece of a sandwich to a candy bar. You just need to be aware of what and how much you're eating so it fits into your overall daily meal plan. Now a snack is typically something that's between 100 and 200 calories. Remember it needs to be less than a meal. It's a snack. I went into my cabinets and I brought out some stuff and we're going to go through and we're going to point out some of the choices because some are real obvious that they're good, some are real obvious that they're not so good and I got some surprises here for you too. Now we're going to start with the raisins. That's a real no-brainer, very healthy. I typically like to buy things like this in the take-along packs because say for your office desk or whatnot, this is fabulous. Now these come in two sizes. This is the larger size and that's about how many raisins you get in, inside the box and it's about 130 calories. Behold, the Pop-Tart, poor nutritional value, about 200 calories for just this one item right here. And although the front of the box was bragging about how much nutritional value it comes with, when I actually looked on the side of the box, little to none, little to none. I would call this not the best choice. Uh, in that same category is this little item, a little Debbie snack cake. This is actually caramel, and I think there's a cookie inside. You've got your chocolate and your little to toasted bits here. Delicious, 150 calories, no nutritional value. These things are deadly. I mean, you can pop two or three of these in your mouth without not even realizing. And at 150 calories a piece, keep these out of the cabinets. Now on this side, we have our potato chips. I've got both the baked potato chips as well as your regular standard potato chips. Both of these are one ounce of potato chips. The baked is 120 calories. The regular is 150. 120. 150. So you know what, depending on what you like, have your chips and enjoy. Now jumping back here, we've got Cheez-Its. Now you talk about a whole lot of bang for your buck, you get 27 pieces of Cheez-Its to I believe it's around 130 calories. So you get to do a lot of chewing for your 130 calories. Let's come over here, what we've got are your blue chip guiltless gourmet nachos. Believe it or not, this is one ounce, 110 calories for the chips. We've got our guacamole, two tablespoons at 45 calories. So we've got here a 150 calorie snack. I'm thinking this is gonna be very satisfying. Some nutritional value, some fiber going on here. Yeah, there's fat, but this, this looks good. Now, over here are crackers. These crackers are actually very similar. They're both Triscuits. This is a, your standard square Triscuit, and this is something new called a Thin Crisp. You've got seven of these to a one ounce serving. You've got 15 of these to a one ounce serving. So for the same number of calories, you actually get to eat twice as many of these as you do these. So I typically find these more satisfying because you get twice as many for the same number of calories. Now if we back up, good old ice cream, source of calcium, all those other good things, that is what a serving, four ounces of ice cream looks like. That's 140 calories of low fat ice cream. I'm thinking that's not very satisfying. And that's also why I call the half gallon containers of ice cream deadly. Because I gotta tell you, if anybody ever gave me that as a serving, I would be insulted. But that is what a serving of ice cream looks like. Beware. Now coming back here, we've got pretzels. This particular shape and size of pretzel, you get five for about 110 calories. And this is again a one ounce serving. Now, Depending on the shape of pretzel you get is how many. Now for 110 calories, sometimes you only get one pretzel. Sometimes, like the cheese it you get a whole bunch of little pretzels. This one you get five. Again, read your labels. Now the Nutri-Grain bar, they get advertised. This is actually a nice little alternative in the morning. These are about 120 calories each, little bit of fiber. They go down real smooth. These are nice if you've got a queasy stomach in the morning. And you want to talk about some good breakfast foods. This is actually a, um, I think it's a, called a Quaker Oat Square. This is 110 calories. It's actually a half a cup. And I've taken this and actually as a baggie that I use in my, in my van throughout the day to snack on. You can add milk to this and it's a meal. So 
actually some of your better breakfast cereals. This one in particular has five grams of fiber. So this one is actually a better choice. Now I'm gonna skip, how's this? We all know this is a great choice. Our cantaloupe, our fresh fruit, cut up, ready to go. I think when it comes to fruit, this doesn't even hit 100 calories. I think this is more like about 50 calories. And sometimes, when only chocolate will do, here we have one ounce piece of chocolate, about 150 calories. This one in particular came from one of those mega blocks, those you know, eight, nine ounce blocks that you just break up pieces off. So here we have three blocks is about, uh, I'm sorry, three blocks is about one ounce, 150 calories. And last but not least, is the egg roll. Now you would think that uh, roughly that this would be a bad choice. Now this egg roll came from the supermarket. It's not from a takeout restaurant or a gourmet restaurant. In the supermarket, uh, in the dairy cases, whatnot, peek around. They will sell egg rolls like this and they really haven't been deep, deep fried. They're like a little browned on the outside. Um, they're not marked low fat, but they actually are. These egg rolls go for about 140 to 150 calories each. Typically they're lower in fat because of the cabbage inside the egg roll, they could have about five grams of fiber. How do you like that? So when we talk about a nice little afternoon snack, pop this in the toaster oven, let it get crispy on the outside since it, is, since it isn't deep fried, and that is a real healthy snack. So remember, a snack is not an entire meal made up of crackers. A snack is one to 200 calories of something that keeps you fueled up until your next meal. You don't need weights to do weight-bearing exercise. As an alternative to dumbbells and weight machines, there's tubing. Now, elastic tubing stretches and comes in different colors to differentiate the pull difficulty. Now, tubing is inexpensive and versatile and allows you to do a whole bunch of different exercises with just a few pieces of this equipment. Now, the key to safe, effective tubing is slow and controlled movement. Maintain control over the tubes and don't let the tubes take control of you. Now, let me give you some tubing exercises. We're gonna start with one of my favorite tubing exercises, the bicep curl. With a handle in each hand, you're gonna step on top of the tubing and you really wanna make sure that your foot is on top of the tubing. None of this toe hanging kind of stuff. I want the tubing secure underneath your whole foot. Standing nice and tall, knees slightly bent, palms up. Just bending at the elbow, you're gonna bring the handles up. And as you can see, I'm keeping my upper arm nice and steady and just bending at the elbow, slow and controlled. What I don't wanna see is you coming forward. This is a whole different exercise. Upper arms next to your body, bend at the elbow. Here's another exercise. You're gonna bring the handles a little closer together and you're gonna bring your leg out to the side. A little bit of balance and a whole lot of this muscle, abductor muscle, take, coming into play with this. Here's another. Palms facing yourself again the tube is secure under your foot, nice and tall, elbows come up. What we're working is the deltoid muscle, the shoulder muscle, that very top muscle there. I've got a few more for the upper body. How about the muscle, that flab bit in the back of the arm? You're going to grab onto the tube, elbows nice and tall, and you're going to extend one arm at a time. Now the secret to this exercise is keeping your elbows up. If you bring your elbows down as you do it, again, it's a whole other exercise. Elbows nice and tall as you extend the arm out. I've got time for one more exercise if you do. This next one I call it the tank top muscle. Arms are gonna be straight out in front of you and straight arms pull apart. What we're working with this is the muscles in the back of our shoulders. This is a real tough little exercise. You don't need a lot of weight, but boy oh boy, I call it the tank top exercise. So just in this little bit of time, I've given you five different exercises that you can do with this simple piece of equipment. I bet if you put on your thinking cap, you can come up with a whole lot more. Now, tubing will eventually wear out by becoming overstretched and over time can dry rot and tear. Please be sure that your tubes are in great shape before every workout. Looking good, keep it up. Bringing fitness to you, we'll be right back. Capture all the excitement, the memories, and the tradition. On-air video will produce a professional high-quality digital video of your child's bar or bat mitzvah. For a free video sample, 
or to reserve your special date. Contact On Air Video at 215-885-2828. That's 215-885-2828. Few things will impact your life like buying or selling your home, which is why you need a professional like Eileen McCafferty Colpe to do it right. As a lifelong resident of Eastern Montgomery County, Eileen is your neighbor in the business, knowledgeable and respected in the community. She will advise you on the best time to buy or sell and will always negotiate to your best advantage. If you're ready to take that next step, contact Eileen directly at 215-620. 3302. Hello, is there anyone out there? Oh, oh, there you are. Hey, if you enjoy our program, let us know. We'd love to get your comments, questions, and suggestions. Email us at bfty at yahoo.com. As we've mentioned, losing weight is a matter of getting more exercise and eating less calories. But how many calories should we have in our diet? Well, actually, there's a formula which we use to find our active calorie rate, which is just a fancy way of telling us how many calories we burn in a day. Now, your active calorie rate is based on several factors. It's based on your age, your weight, height, gender, and your level of activity. Now, we could do the mathematics to calculate the active calorie rate, but there's an easier way. There are numerous calculators you could find on the internet, and all you have to do is enter your information. To begin, let's make up a Jane Doe. Let's say Jane weighs 175 pounds. Her height is 5 foot 5 or 65 inches. Her age, let's be kind, 40 years old. Gender is female. And her approximate level of activity, well, let's say she's not a couch potato, but she doesn't teach aerobics either. Once we've entered this information, we simply click to calculate. Now here's the number we're looking for, her active calorie rate. This is the number of calories Jane Doe burns every day and maintains a body weight of 175 pounds doing what she normally does. Now if Jane wants to lose weight, one of the things she needs to do is to cut calories. Now here on this site, they recommend Jane reduce her calories to 1,200 calories a day. At this rate, Jane should lose about a pound a week. And that's probably a good normal rate for most of us. A couple of things you'll have to remember. First, you don't want to cut too many calories from your diet. Your body's used to a certain number of calories a day. And if you cut too many calories from your diet, your body recognizes it's not getting enough energy, and so your metabolism slows down, burning less calories, which is defeating yourself. Also, as you get thinner, you'll have to periodically recalculate your active calorie rate to make sure you're cutting the right amount of calories from your diet. To find one of these calorie calculators, just go to our website and click on the links button. Do you have halitosis? Well, save your breath. New research suggests that laser surgery can cure bad breath. After performing the laser procedure on 51 patients with fetid tonsillitis, the most common cause of bad breath, Israeli researchers found that 96% were cured of their halitosis with three or fewer treatments. It seems the ensuing scar tissue from the heat-damaging laser treatment destroys the tiny crypts where halitosis-causing microbes live. Before you pop that next chill pill to reduce stress, Consider eating a bowl of cereal. A recent study coming out of Great Britain determined that regular consumption of breakfast cereal is associated with less stress and improved physical and mental health. Specifically, those who ate cereal had lower levels of cortisol, a hormone which is associated with stress. 
Depending on the outcome of additional research, doctors may soon be prescribing kicks instead of Prozac. Oh, excuse me, it's for medicinal purposes. Really? Researchers at the University of Mississippi have concluded that red wine, which contains the antioxidant resveratrol, can ward off everything from cancer to heart attack. Although not every variety of red wine packs the same wallop. Top of the wine list is the California Pinot Noir, which contains 5.01 milligrams of resveratrol per liter. The great part is you can buy it over the counter. And that is all the news that's fit. Thanks for watching. Bringing fitness to you. We'll be right back. Who could have predicted then what the future would hold? Which is all the more reason to plan ahead. Don't leave your fate up to family and well-meaning relatives. A video will and video living will can make your wishes clearly known. Don't wait. Call us for more information at 215-885-2828. Attention business owners, imagine your message here. Now you can advertise on Bringing Fitness to You at extremely competitive rates. Bringing Fitness to You is locally produced and reaches over 350,000 cable subscribers in eastern Montgomery County, Philadelphia, and Cherry Hill. If you're interested in advertising on this program, call 215-885-2828. Capture all the excitement, the memories, and the tradition. On-air video will produce a professional high-quality digital video of your child's bar or bat mitzvah. For a free video sample or to reserve your special date, contact On-Air Video at 215-885-2828. That's 215-885-2828. Well, I hope you learned about healthy eating and just making some smart choices. Because remember, it's not about doing it perfect. It's just about doing it a little better than you have been. You take care. copy of this program, send $14.95 to Bringing Fitness to You, 8203 Westminster Road, Elkins Park, Pennsylvania, 19027. Be sure to indicate the show number. Let Sharon Pack, the area's most successful personal trainer, help you meet your fitness goals. Sharon brings the equipment and guidance to you, giving you a gym quality workout in the comfort and privacy of your home. If you're looking to achieve your personal best, contact Sharon Pack at 215-576-5758. That's 215-576-5758.